Welcome to Vision of China. On May 23rd, TSMC announced that the U.S. Department of Commerce had granted its Nanjing plant an indefinite exemption, allowing it to purchase advanced lithography machines and other equipment from overseas. This move is widely seen as a new strategy by the United States to curb the development of China's chip industry. However, it also reflects the U.S.'s frustrations and challenges in suppressing China's high-tech sector. In 2020, TSMC was forced to halt chip production for a Chinese chip company, leaving several Chinese chip companies unable to use TSMC's 7 nanometers or more advanced processes. Yet, just three years later, in 2023, the same Chinese company successfully produced a 5G chip close to the 7 nanometers process and reintroduced 5G smartphones. This breakthrough signifies that China has resolved the technical issues of advanced processes, producing near 7 nanometers chips with existing lithography machines. The U.S. initially aimed to stifle China's advanced chip development by restricting cooperation with key supply chain companies like TSMC, but this strategy has evidently failed. Facing China's rapid progress in chip development, the U.S. now allows TSMC's Nanjing plant to purchase advanced lithography equipment, hoping to leverage TSMC to hinder China's chip manufacturing technology. TSMC, which already mass-produces 3 nanometers chips, had only reached 16 nanometers processes at its Nanjing plant, significantly lagging behind its Taiwan operations. China has made significant advancements in lithography technology. Recently, the Financial Times reported that a 5 nanometer smartphone chip designed by Huawei High Silicon and manufactured by a Chinese mainland company is about to enter the market. This news has sparked extensive discussion in the tech world. The 7 nanometers Kirin 9000's chip in Huawei's Mate 60 smartphone has already impressed the global community with China's chip making capabilities. Although EUV lithography machines play a crucial role in advanced processes, China has managed to produce more advanced chips without them using multiple exposure and multiple etching techniques. Breakthroughs in immersion DUV lithography technology have made 7 nanometers and even more advanced processes possible. If TSMC's Nanjing plant can mass produce 7 nanometers and other advanced processes, it could potentially take orders from Chinese mainland chip companies due to its more mature and advanced technology, slowing down the development of China's chip manufacturing technology. This strategy has been validated by the U.S. in the memory chip industry. In 2022, Chinese memory chip companies were the first to mass-produce the world's most advanced 232-layer NAND flash. However, following U.S. restrictions on these companies purchasing advanced equipment while allowing Samsung and SK Hynix to purchase advanced equipment for their mainland factories, Samsung and SK Hynix mass-produced more advanced 300-layer NAND flash chips within a year while Chinese memory chips remained at 232 layers. Now, the U.S. is applying the same tactics in the chip manufacturing field, attempting to slow down the progress of Chinese chip companies by allowing TSMC's mainland plant to mass-produce more advanced processes, thereby reducing their revenue. However, having learned from past experiences, the Chinese chip industry is now more aware of the risks of relying on external supply chains, and is increasingly united in developing independent chip manufacturing technology. Despite the pressure and suppression from the US, China has made significant breakthroughs in lithography machine technology. Tech giants like Huawei continue to invest in research and development, achieving key technological advancements in lithography machines. Earlier this year, Huawei announced several lithography patents covering critical aspects of lithography machine manufacturing laying a solid foundation for the future independent development and mass production of high-end lithography machines. Moreover, many domestic companies and research institutions are actively promoting the localization of core components of lithography machines. For instance, the dual worktable lithography machine developed by Tsinghua University and Huazhou Precision has achieved 10 nanometers precision, and the objective lens system developed by Changchun Institute of Optics are all results of these efforts. Last August, Huawei launched the Mate 60 Pro, featuring a processor made in China, which raised alarms in the U.S. The U.S. government is now attempting to impose new restrictions on domestic suppliers supporting Huawei. However, the development of China's chip industry appears undeterred, with Huawei restarting its Vanguard project this April, 
launching the Pora 70 series. Earlier this month, Reuters reported that Huawei's new flagship Pora 70 Pro uses a higher proportion of domestic components than the Mate 60, equipped with improved Kirin chipsets and flash memory produced by local suppliers. A teardown by iFixit and TechSearch International for Reuters revealed that the flash memory might be packaged by Huawei subsidiary HiSilicon with other components made by Chinese companies. Researchers noted that the new device includes memory chips from South Korea's SK Hynix, but the NAND chips might be supplied by HiSilicon. A few weeks ago, Tech Insights dismantled the Pura 70 smartphone to examine the Kirin chipset. The recent teardown highlighted the success of the Pura 70 model, noting that this high-end device will be sold globally in 4G mode. Tech Insights analysis showed that the standard Huawei Pura 70 smartphone contains about 33 domestically made components, the highest number so far for any model of the same brand, benefiting numerous local companies. Of the 69 parts in the basic model, about 33 are made in China. While the Pura 70 still uses DDR5 memory chips from SK Hynix, future models are expected to achieve internal storage localization. Tech Insight's senior analyst Stacy Wegner stated that the standard version phone has the most domestically manufactured components, with only five non-Chinese suppliers. For comparison, the Huawei Pura 70 Pro has 22 Chinese-made components and three non-Chinese-made components. The Pura 70 Ultra model uses NAND flash chips from Yangtze Memory Technologies. Tech Insights noted that Huawei aims to achieve self-sufficiency and eliminate reliance on U.S. components. The new teardown shows that the majority of components being locally sourced suggest that foreign restrictions will not significantly impact the company. Previously, Fomalhaut Techno Solutions dismantled the Huawei Pura 70 series and found that except for the main camera of the Pura 70 Ultra, which uses a Sony sensor from Japan, key components of other models like Pura 70, Pura 70 Pro, and Pura 70 Pro Plus have achieved over 90% localization. This includes core processors, displays, casings, batteries, lenses, cooling systems, and acoustic components. The main suppliers include leading Chinese companies such as Will Semiconductor, Ofilm, Lens Technology, GoerTech, Changing Precision, Sunny Optical, BOE, and Crystal Optech. Despite the expanding trade sanctions targeting Huawei and other Chinese companies to restrict their access to advanced technology, the proportion of Chinese components continues to rise, showcasing significant progress and capabilities, indicating that U.S. sanctions have motivated China to close the technological gap and achieve self-sufficiency. In a recent move against Huawei, the U.S. Department of Commerce revoked export licenses held by Intel and Qualcomm to supply smartphone and laptop chips to the company. According to the Global Times, a Chinese Ministry of Commerce spokesperson condemned the new restrictions as an abuse of export controls and typical economic coercion, which not only violates WDO rules but also severely harms U.S. companies' interests. In summary, the high localization rate of Huawei's Pura 70 Pro and breakthroughs in Chinese lithography technology demonstrate China's growing self-sufficiency in high-end smartphone and chip manufacturing. Despite the U.S. attempting to suppress China's chip industry by granting TSMC's Nanjing plant an indefinite exemption, China has amassed sufficient technological prowess and industrial chain advantages to counter external pressures and challenges. In the future, China's position in the global semiconductor industry will further strengthen, astonishing the West. The increasing self-sufficiency in China's semiconductor industry and the steady advancements in lithography technology reveal a future where China could become a dominant player in the global chip market. The U.S. finds itself in a position where its efforts to suppress China's tech development are met with innovative solutions and breakthroughs from Chinese companies. This dynamic raises a critical question. Can the U.S. continue to rely on sanctions and trade restrictions? Or will it need to reconsider its strategy in the face of China's growing technological capabilities? What are your thoughts on this complex situation? Do you think the U.S. can find new ways to maintain its technological edge? Or is China on an unstoppable path to becoming a semiconductor powerhouse? Share your opinions in the comments below, and let's discuss the potential future of the global tech industry.